Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing? You know, um, it's uh, we're we're prepping for week three. Week three of college football. Week three and a half, if you count week zero. Which do you count week zero since it's week zero? No, no I don't care. No, we're, we're this is week three. Week this three week and three a half. Here. No, just week three, Jared. Week three. Just and week three. Half. Week three and a half. All right. <laughs> let's God, let's just let's just do it. Know your enemy, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Kyle, question yes. from Coach yes. Nomad in the Discord server. What exactly is a Hilltopper? Well, you're you're about to be disp- disappointed on what a hilltopper is. Okay, can I guess? Sure. Okay, um, you know how when you get married, no. and, and and there's the the topper Wrong. on top of the cake, Wrong. and they call that a cake topper. No. no, no. Well, imagine you don't have money for a cake, and you just at, at the wedding you just have a mound of dirt, and then but you still have the bride and the groom, little action figures. Because they're action figures. Um, and then you just put those on top of the dirt. Boom. Hilltoppers. A hilltopper, Jared. Or the hilltopper name is derived from the 232 foot hill which the campus sits on. I ain't even impressed. I was I was born in West Virginia. That's Listen, y'all are from Western Kentucky. Y'all shouldn't be talking about hills. Because I know for a fact, Eastern Kentucky is where the hills are. But Jared, they say that that they that would the be like if the Bobcats the called themselves the Great Planers. Should should the Athens, Athens, Ohio Bobcats be calling themselves the Great Planers? Because I don't think they should. But they claim, Jared, to have the best, best, best mascot in college sports. Is he the best or is he just chaotic? Because mm. like, what, what, what is this? And I, and I get that it's it's fun. But like, also have some dignity. One, what the hell are you Two, have some dignity? I think are my two responses to the Western Kentucky Western Kentucky blob. I don't know what he's called. What is he called? He's a blob. He's is a red furry being. That's it. <laughs> okay, but he has a name though, right? Big red. It see it's just you're you're getting more disappointed as we talk more about just getting to know. Listen, one of the reasons why this mascot is so appealing is, is that we don't know anything about it. The more we learn about it, because when it's just sort of a random chaotic thing, it's kind of fun, and then you actually like realize that there's zero creativity behind it. it you know what it is? It's a blank canvas, and because it's a blank canvas, people project what they want it to be on top of it. But as an actual being, it's nothing. So, no, it is not the best mascot. Not even close, as a matter of fact. Where, where's the personality? See, now that's a personality. <laughs> Good old Brutus. All right. Western Kentucky coming into this game 2-0, and Jared. They are undefeated coming into Columbus. And what can I describe them as a a team that's taking care of business in in their first two games? They beat South Florida uh, soundly, forty one to twenty four, as well as Houston Christian, fifty two to twenty two. It looks looks pretty good on paper for them, right? Yeah, and, and honestly, if you fast forward to last year, and you know they, you know they went nine and five, which isn't, you know, it's okay, a huge okay. result. But they put up numbers on the offense. This is an incredibly impressive offense from last year, and they're returning a lot of parts from it. 
Uh, most noted, well, before we get into that, uh, and they have been picked this year um, by the Conference USA Media uh, to be uh, as the preseason favorite to win the Conference USA. Uh, I, I don't know how we feel about Conference USA anymore. It feels like it's like it feels like it's the um, conference that that the AAU or excuse me, not the AAU, the AAC um, uses as like their farm conference as their relegatory conference. It's like, oh, uh, someone, uh, we're the AAU. I did it again. We're, we're, you know, we're the American Athletic Conference. Uh, someone stole one of our teams. Hey, Conference USA, what you got? And then they just steal from Conference USA. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it is, it is what it is. I mean, you listen. You, you set out at the beginning of the year to win your conference. And Conference USA, for what it is, it's still the conference that Western Kentucky plays in and their favorites to win it. Um, most notably, we're uh, talking about this returning offense. Uh, they return Austin Reed, who was a guy that was getting. Yeah, you know, it's funny to say someone's getting offers to enter enter the transfer portal because that's not allowed. But it's also what was happening. Uh, rumors, especially surrounding Louisville, uh, wanting to poach Austin Reed. Uh, but uh, Austin Reed stays put. He stays at Western Kentucky. Um, he is the first team Conference USA quarterback. Last year, Kyle, he throws for 4,744 yards, 40 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions and he rushed for another 224 yards and eight touchdowns and remember those are those are college good. football ru rushing numbers for quarterbacks that's also minus sacks but it should be noted he didn't give up many sacks or more, maybe more accurately the offensive line didn't give up much sacks um they were 10th in the country in sacks allowed in 2022 uh, and, you know, the transfer portal giveth and the transfer portal taketh away. Uh, they, they did. They had one of the best offensive lines. I mean, it, especially if you want to weight it by recruiting stars or weight it by conference. And one of the best offensive lines in the country last year, Western Kentucky did. Uh, they they. Unfortunately, though, in the in modern college football, uh, that just kind of means that you're going to get your guys poached. Um, they lost guards. Rusty uh, stats. I believe that's how you pronounce that name to Texas Tech and Gunner Litton to Auburn uh, in the transfer portal, losing both of their guards. But they do return uh, all conference players. Center Vincent Murphy guard uh, Quintavious. I've, I didn't put his last name in the notes for some reason um, and tackle uh, Mark Good. Uh, three incredibly talented offensive linemen. Uh, this, this is, by the way, another instance in which the second week in a row now. You think, oh, well, it's just Youngstown State or, oh, it's just Western Kentucky. Youngstown State, and we tried to warn you guys on last week's Know Your Enemy. I just realized I don't have the correct branding up. Branding. There we go. Let's slide that Buckeye huddle over. There we go. My bad. All right. Correct branding on the on the frame now. We warned you last week on Know Your Enemy uh, that Youngstown State for the FCS had a really good, really big, really old offensive line. Old in college football, meaning good. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and I'm, I'm here again to tell you, yes, it's just Western Kentucky. It's just a Conference USA team. Uh, but they have three excellent offensive linemen on this squad. Uh, they have good offensive line coaching and good offensive line culture. 
and a really good quarterback. And Kyle, they're pretty talented in the wide receiver room, too. Yeah, and some people may recognize a name here, uh, Blue Smith. Anybody remember um, used to be with uh, the Buckeyes before transferring out? Recruiting and, recruiting folks might remember him as LaChristian Smith. Yep. Uh, so far this year, he's had eight catches for 88 yards and a touchdown as well. So definitely keep an eye out for him. See, but, see if he but, makes but a, Kyle, makes a he's, splash. But they also have another player. Yeah, I was about to say, he's team. probably their third wide receiver on the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the their main receiver, um, Easton Messer, is probably is their go to person who already has eleven catches, one hundred thirty four yards, and a touchdown for this game or for the year so far. And he wasn't even but, one of the guys coming into the season that you expected to be one of the primary wide receivers. Returning from their twenty twenty two squad, uh, Malachi Corley, um, who had one hundred and one uh, receptions for 1300 yards and 11 scores last year and michael matheson who had 52 receptions and three scores last year point is is that they have a deep core of wide receivers a really good quarterback and a really good offensive line yeah they've they've already put up 46 and a half points so far uh, per game so far this year uh so yeah they're going to move the ball we're going to try to move the ball pretty efficiently here and they do it through the air which they've averaged over 300 yards in the air and just over 100 yards rushing as well so their offense moves pretty well so far in two games scores plenty of points but it's the defense side that i think ohio state can definitely take advantage of where yes they score a lot of points offensively but they also let up a lot too where they're actually letting up more yards on defense than they are have on offensive yardage too. So I think Ohio State needs to start off fast here and really put the game away early here and not not try to make this game interesting. Because if they do, you're going to have a lot of upset Buckeye fans on the edge of their seat here saying, why is this game so close to West, um, to a team of Western Kentucky? Remember this conversation during Scarlet and Gray, Spike says. Um so once again and just going to toss this out there and i'll say this before scarlet and grade i still don't expect ohio state to be showing much of the playbook and a lot of that might depend upon how well this defense does against this high-powered offense if the defense can keep a cap on this western kentucky offense I still expect ohio state to play things incredibly close to the chest and incredibly when I say conservative, I don't necessarily mean that the offense is going to be conservative, but that they're going to yeah, and th- conservatively hold back uh, a lot of their more sophisticated, like passing routes, um, in their route yeah, combinations I, I, and whatnot. I really think this game, it's not so much. I mean, yeah, a lot of people are going to want to see a better offense performance than that you've seen the first two weeks here but i really think this is going to be the challenge for the defense the defense hasn't really been challenged so far this year obviously this is going to be their biggest test here and how well can they slow down uh, this passing attack here against the hilltoppers i think that's going to be the big question in this game here and so far what i've seen from the buckeyes i, I like this defense i like what coach Knowles has done this year so far but this I think, is I think that's going to that's going to be the main topic for this game is how well can the defense hold down Western Kentucky's offense? Yeah. And, and I think it's like, again, if we like compare to Youngstown State or like Youngstown State, not like a talent rich team. It's an FCS team. It's just not not talent deep and not talent rich. But what you did have with Youngstown State was a a very senior team and a lot of guys who were on the, like a very cohesive team. Um, what you have with Western Kentucky is a lot more talent, a lot more talent, but not necessarily as cohesive. There's a lot of guys transferring in, transferring out. Um, Austin Reed, I think probably the exception to that, he is... 
been there. He has plenty of snaps. Um, I think he's a guy who's going to easily make an NFL team, in my opinion. Um, I'm not saying he's going to be like a first round quarterback or anything, but I think he makes an NFL so NFL squad. Um, point being is that I, I, I don't. It'll be it's just interesting because, again, Youngstown State and I said this a couple times during the uh, game during on the discord server, Youngstown State felt a lot like playing Navy where, again, it's not like that there was a ton of talent there, but they were all just like. A cohesive unit of older guys and even and that makes up for a lot of talent, especially on the offensive line. Western Kentucky much much more talented maybe not quite as cohesive if, if that if i'm making sense i don't know if i'm doing a good job expressing what i'm trying to express um but yeah austin reed again a great quarterback um i mentioned his stats from last year through two games um has already is basically throwing 300 yards a game for three touchdowns a game on average and has yet to throw an interception Moving to the defensive side, though, Jared, I, I was just looking at the defense here and trying to see who to talk about. And I think it, it starts one guy with their it, it starts with their linebacker. It starts with their linebacker here, uh, Jaquise Evans, leads the team in tackles. Um, the exper the most experienced person, well, not most, but an upperclassman here leads the team, and and I mentioned I'm not very impressed from what I've seen so far from Western Kentucky, like I mentioned, lighting up 450 yards per game here. Yeah, I just, I don't know what more to say about Western Kentucky. I, I think Ohio State should be able to move the ball very easily against them, especially on the ground. So I'm hoping that we start seeing the rushing attack have more success in this game and feel a little bit more comfortable going into the following week. Yeah, the... Again, uh, uh, Jaquez Evans? I don't know. Kyle might, might have been right. Um, he is a, an impressive football player. Very impressive football player. Um, he's a linebacker, defensive end hybrid. Most, he's technically a linebacker, will mostly play linebacker, but is primarily an edge rusher. Um, in 2022, he had 106 tackles, nine sacks, and 14 tackles for a loss. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna put him over Simmons, and we're gonna see what happens. That's what I would yeah, do. That, um, yeah, and, that, and that's the and that's the big question too. Is Simmons like he, he's he's got he's got to get it right this week here because if if we still have issues, if he still has issues this week here, it might be a long game uh, against Notre Dame. Yeah. Got got it. Got to get it corrected in this game here. Um, defensive end uh, Christian Zachary transfers in from Liberty. Uh, Dallas Walker transfers in from Texas A&M at the defensive tackle position. Jaden Loving transfers in from Bethune Cookman at the defensive tackle position. Um they also have a uh, Terry and Thompson at the defensive tackle position. These last four guys are solid players. Dallas Walker is such a football name. You're not wrong, especially like from Texas A&M too, right? He's literally Dallas Walker, Texas Ranger. Um, <laughs> uh Linebackers outside of Evans are young and inexperienced. Um, the defensive backfield, uh, they're pretty OK in the safety position. Uh, Talik Allen and Tendrick Simpkins. Um, yeah, I think I think that's the guy you got to keep out, out an eye out for Simpkins. He likes to play up right up on the line there. He already has two and a half sacks and a forced fumble for the year right now. Expect to see Simpkins play up more, try to stop the Ohio State's rushing attack right up at the 
within the five yards uh, line of scrimmage. I, I, I don't I don't know if playing your safeties up is a good call uh, against Ohio State, in my opinion, um, because while they do have quarterback Upton Stout, who is a good player, um, he he's a good conference USA player. And I'll just leave that at that. And they, they really have cornerbacks uh, by committee on the other side. They have a few different guys. Um, uh, it's probably a bit of a struggle to figure out uh, who their other cornerbacks are at this point. Uh, so, like, keep an eye on Stout in the secondary. Keep an eye on Simpkins in the secondary. But realistically... The one player you really, really, really need to watch what as far as Western Kentucky is concerned on the defensive side of the ball is Evans on the edge. That's, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot of talent on the offensive side of this football team, a lot of talent on the offensive side of this football team. This will be the best, the better offense than Indiana. Do I need to say that uh, in case I needed to say that out loud? They have a better offense than Indiana. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. This will be one of the better offenses Ohio State plays this year. Yep. Uh, period. Not out of conference, uh, just period. This will be one of the better offenses Ohio State plays this year. So mm-hmm. don't freak out when, when, because I'm saying when Western Kentucky scores some points, because Western Kentucky is going to score some points. Uh, I, I think if you're Ohio State, uh, the biggest thing is to just not let them have a bunch of sustained drives that keeps your offense off the field. Um, if maybe if you give up a big play here or there, or if Western Kentucky gets like kind of like what we saw with Youngstown State, where they had like a drive that would go three and out, a drive that would go three and out, then like a really nice long drive, then a drive that would go three and out, and then a nice long, and then a drive that goes three and out, a drive goes three and out. As long as you're getting the ball back to the offense and you're not giving up too many first downs, uh, I think that's key here as far as, you know, but you're not going to keep them out of the end zone. Just, just the first time Kentucky scores a touchdown, please don't freak out. First time Western Kentucky scores a touchdown. Don't freak out. They're going to they're going to get some points. This is a high powered offense. Yep. So Kentucky's right. version of Texas Tech. Sure. Sure. I'm going to say All yes. Right, let's, let's go ahead and move into our predictions here, Jared. So let's let's go ahead and first start with Ohio State player to watch in this game. Who do you I'm, got? I'm going to go with JT Tuimolo. Um, he should be going up against a very good offensive tackle in Mark Good, uh, pun not intended, uh, and a very impressive offensive tackle, Mark Good. Um, and o- honestly, I've not been seeing out of the defensive line what I want to be seeing out of, again, so, you know, like we talked about in Scarlet and Grade, you have to grade based off of expectation and grade based off of, um, you know, based on a curve. And I'm, I'm not seeing the defensive line dominate the way I want to see the way I expected to see the defensive line dominate. So I'm going to be watching Sawyer and JT a lot in this game against the, again, against a good offensive line. Western Kentucky is a very good offensive line, uh, but no excuses this week. They need to show up uh, and they because if they if they don't get pressure and if the defensive line's not disruptive in this football game. Reed's going to pick them apart. He might not pick them apart, but he's going to get his shots in. pick apart. Maybe not, but he's going to get his shots in. If you're not getting if you're not getting shots on him, he's going to get his shots on you. Well, my player, my player of the game for Ohio State is one to help stop that. And that is Denzel Burke. I think I think Denzel Burke will continue to have a, a great game here like he has the first two games of the season. I think if Burke can lock down that one side of the field there, I think I think Ohio State will have a 
really good chance to slow down this Western Kentucky offense and and shorten their drives. Enemy player to watch. Um, there, there are two very obvious choices here. Uh, I think uh, I picked one. Kyle picked the other. I'm going with Jaquez Evans, the linebacker, defensive end, pass rush specialist, edge player Evans. Um, again, he's <laughs> Austin says Simmons until proven otherwise in regards to the Ohio State player to watch. Yeah. I mean, I I didn't want to put I don't want to I, it's getting to the point where I feel like I'm picking on Simmons sometimes. So I didn't want to just like keep putting him in the Ohio State player to watch, even though it's true. Um, but I'm still getting around to that talking point by putting Evans as the enemy player to watch, because if you're watching Evans, you're going to be watching Simmons. Um, so, yeah, yeah that's I- he, he's he is the the standout player on that defense. So yeah, enemy player to watch Jaquez Evans. Welcome. And I'll go with the other. And I'll I'll go on the other side and I'll I'll go with Austin Reed here. Ohio State's going to put up points here, but how how good can Austin lead his offense and how many points can he score against Ohio's defense? So really it's it's up to Austin here and how well he does. Um, in this game to see how close how close of a game he can make this against the Buckeyes. Who has a better day, Evans or JT? Uh, statistically, probably Evans. Evans. Only because he's like, he's the only guy on that defense. It's a little bit easier to get stats when you're not competing against your teammates sometimes. And I also expect Ohio State to get more snaps offensively, which gives Evans more opportunity so, I mean, if we're talking like statistically, like if we're talking like provable metrics, uh, Evans. All right. Uh, team matchup, Jared. I am going to go with Ohio State's uh, defensive line versus Kentucky's offensive line here. I yeah. think depending on how, how well Ohio State's defensive line can, and it's definitely been a a talking point so far this year, seeing a lackluster of, of pressure from this defensive line. Can we, can we see an improvement against, against Western Kentucky here? Get some pressure, make, make Reed more uncomfortable, get rid of that ball a lot quicker there. I think, I think that's definitely, definitely the, uh, the position battle to watch. All right, Kyle, Kyle, a key matchup. I had Austin Reed versus the Ohio State secondary, but as I was listening to you talk, I decided to shift it up. You said Ohio State's defensive line versus Western Kentucky's offensive line. I'm putting Ohio State's offensive line versus Western Kentucky's defensive line. If Ohio State wants this season to be successful, the way an Ohio State season is deemed successful, they need to get better in the trenches. If Ohio State, forget the vagaries. If Ohio State wants to beat Notre Dame, Ohio State needs to be better in the trenches. Period. Uh, This is the dress rehearsal. This game is the dress rehearsal. All right, the spread here, Jared. Spurred in this game when we locked it in was at 27 and a half. Yeah. Does Ohio State cover? I've I got Western Kentucky. Um, I, I think that they I think they put some points up and I think I think Ohio State at some point surpasses 27 and a half, but that Western Kentucky probably gets a late score to you know, close that door uh, after the fact. But no, I I don't like Ohio State minus 27 and a half in this game. Western Kentucky's got Western Kentucky's got too much offensive power. And I think Ohio State, if they get up big, they're going to shut down the playbook and go as vanilla as possible. They want to they, they will continue to try to not show Notre Dame anything in this game. 
All right. What do you have for the final score then? Final score, I have 45-24. Because tradition. This is tradition. Kyle's going to break right. tradition now. Yeah, I, I also have Western Kentucky to to cover here. Ohio State has not covered the Vegas line. Well, I guess they only had one chance to do it. But <laughs> um, if there was a Vegas line last weekend, Ohio State wouldn't have covered it either. But I don't think they'll, they will in this game here. Uh, I have Ohio State 42, uh, Western Kentucky 21. Kind of kind of similar to like what Jared said. There's Western Kentucky is going to be able to score points. If, if Ohio State can hold them to 14 points or yeah. less, that's, yeah. a, that's a big success. That's I agree. That's a big success. But I think – I totally I think agree. 20, I think 21 is reasonable. And I think if even if they hold them to 21, I think is is good too, especially if they're averaging – 46 and a half points so far this year. Yeah, it's uh, ho- holding. I mean, I'll if Ohio State. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll even say if Ohio State holds Western Kentucky to under 20, that's a win. Yep. Yep. Uh, I think that's right. a, I think that's a win for the defense. All right. It is. It is time, Jared, for uh, Nomad, Austin, by the way, says 59 10. Nice. All right, it is Austin. It is time for Austin's over unders, Jared. So let's let's jump right into that. He has here over under two and a half sacks for Ohio State. Under. Yeah. Until I can see some pressure from this uh, defensive line, I'm going to go under. And again, this is a Western Kentucky team that only gave up ten sacks all of last year. That offensive line was better than this offensive line due to player loss. Acknowledged. Uh, but again, they all but they still brought back a lot of their core guys on the offensive line. You still have the same quarterback. Uh, only gave up 10 sacks all of last year. Uh, I'm going to go under on two and a half sacks. Yep, I agree. I agree. Sticking on the defensive side, he has here steel chambers tackles at five and a half. Gonna go, gonna go under on this one as well. Um, I, I think a lot of it depends upon how many passes Austin Reed because I, I don't, I don't know how much they're gonna actually even attempt to run the ball. This is a pass first, second, and third team. Uh, and ideally in an ideal world, uh, you're not letting them complete too many of those passes, which can lead to decreased tackle numbers, especially if you get up big. Um, but that would also lead to a lot of short passes, which might lead to some additional tackles for chambers, I'm still going to go under, but I think I think it's a perfect I think it's a perfect number. I think it's like five. I think it's like four or five tackles. Yeah, I'm going to go under, too. There's just similar to what you said earlier, Jared. There's just too many good athletes on this defense. It's going to be hard for one particular person to. To get up a lot of tackles, unless they just have a hell of a game and. Or yeah, and they and they just have a lot of tackles here. Or unless Western Kentucky surprises us and runs the ball a ton. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking at the first two games here. Um, there's only been two players that had uh, had uh, more than five and a half tackles in each game. Uh, Chambers in the first game had six. Chambers had five in the previous game, so. Now I see why he got five and a half, <laughs> but Eichenberg had uh, six tackles in uh, against Youngstown State, so I'm going to go under as well. Ohio State rushing yards at 204 and a half. You know, I, I'm actually going to go over on this one. I just I got I got to believe that Ohio State figures it out and gets this uh, against this Western Kentucky defense here where they are definitely susceptible to the running attack. Yeah. I'm going to go over because I, it it needs to happen. 
<laughs> one, one, of, one of two things. If Ohio State doesn't break 205 rushing yards, either A, they didn't want to, or B, it's a total failure. I mean, it's possible that they just like, you know what, let's let's get McCord's arm <laughs> warmed up ahead of the Notre Dame game. Let's sling it across the yard. Let's go have some fun. And maybe they just don't run the ball a lot. But if they run the ball, if they run the how about if they run the ball more than 25 times, 20, 25. I mean, that would that would that would be an insane average. Gosh, I, that would be I, an I insane hope so. Average. So in the but two just, games that in the two games that Western Kentucky has played. Uh, so the first game against Houston Christian, they ran the ball 35 times. And then last week when they played South Florida, South Florida ran the ball 61 times. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't I don't think so, Ohio State's going to run the ball 61 times. I yeah, I'm going to go I, no. I'm going to go over cuz I think Ryan Day is going to look at a team with not great uh, not a great defensive Ooh. line and some actually pretty bad outside of the one guy some um, pretty bad linebackers otherwise. Um, yeah. And I think he's going to see uh, an opportunity maybe to gain some confidence for the offensive line up front. And so yep, I'm going to yep. go over. All right. Western Kentucky passing 167 and a half. Hit the over. Honestly, can, if Austin can do that. Oh my God. This game will be up. This game will be a blowout be a blowout if Ohio State can I'd hold them th- under that. I'd be thrilled if they hold them under 200 yards passing. Yeah. They are, what, they're averaging yeah, what, uh, yeah, 330 yards, something like that a game. So, yeah, that that would be amazing. Marvin Harrison and and Fleming catches at nine and a half. Combined? Over. Combined. I'm going to go under because I just I just have a feeling Ohio State's going to try to run the ball more, just less chances for for the receivers to to catch the ball here. So I'm I'm going to go under here, but that, that's that's a good that's a good line. I agree, it is a good line. Uh, he has Evan Pryor and Hayden touches at six and a half. They they haven't even gotten the ball yet, right? I believe they're currently zero on the season. On the season, yes. Um, yeah. So I, under. Yeah. Hard as under. Mu- as much as much as a uh, slip cat f- uh, favorite here. Well, I think Austin just we gave haven't, us. We haven't, we haven't we haven't seen him in the uh, on the field yet. I would love to see love to see Pryor on the field and see what he can do there. But I'm going to go under. All right, and the last one he has here, total game drives. Ooh. Total game drives at 23 and a half. So, as stated, Western Kentucky is going to primarily throw the ball. Um, I We don't know what Ohio State's going to do. I think Ohio State's preference would be to run the ball more, but we don't know, really. Um. I'm going to go under. It just seems like a high number to me. I'm going to go over. I know it's combined. I know it's combined, but that just seems, it seems high. I'm going to go over. Right. Um, I think Ohio right, State yeah. has big game. I think if, if Ohio State decides to throw the ball a lot, I think there's a lot of big play potential against a... Yeah over talented or outmatched rather Western Kentucky secondary. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, we just, we got a minute here just to answer just a couple of questions here. Uh, Coach Nomad says, was McCord looking over his shoulder? And now that he's named QB one, which, Oh, Hey Jared. Yeah. We didn't mention McCord. <laughs> Surprise Jared. Docking. <laughs> so shocking um, now that, that we he- opened the show with it. Yeah. Now now that he's named QB1, does his play greatly improve? 
Yes. I'm going to say yes. As Jer- as Jared as Jared steps away from the mic there. Yeah, I'm I'm going to say yes. That I think it's going to be less pressure of him to try to perform well and he's going to relax more so. I'm optimistic. I'm going to say yes. Um I I do think he, I mean he's going his, his play is going to improve. Uh, I don't know if him quote unquote looking over his shoulder is high on the reasons why he'll improve. I think he'll improve one because it's his third game and not his second game. Just that's, that's it. It's his third game. He's, he's two game. He's a whole game better now. Yep. Um, also with him being QB one, he's now getting a higher percentage of the practice reps, which is helpful, especially for a young quarterback. Um, I, mean, the, the, I would pick those two reasons before I'd pick Kyle McCord looking over his shoulder. All right. Um, and the last one here. <laughs> uh, did Evan Pryor disappear? My conspiracy theory, and I think I talked about this during um, Scarlet and Grade. My conspiracy theory is that the, they 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 have him hidden underneath he, he, that that like what's what's the playbook? What's, he's he, he's hidden it's, in it's, that playbook that ha- they haven't unleashed yet. Yeah, it's he's he's in the Notre Dame section of the playbook. Like all of a sudden, Evan Pryor's it's going to be like one of those bad football movies where there's a player like on the sidelines because in football movies they don't know that like active rosters. Are you have to be declared before the game and, and stuff like that? But it's like bad football movie where you know the star players on the sidelines in, in in civilian clothes on crutches, and then like at the key play of the game, they drop the cru- they clut the their crutches, and then they they somehow have their pads on underneath their street clothes, and they just and then they run into the game because you know that. Yes, speaks essentially that. <laughs> um, because, you know, keeping your player out the entire football game for one surprise play is totally worth it. And, you know, active roster aren't aren't a thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the point is, is that my conspiracy theory mind mind has me saying that, like, they have Evan Pryor underneath one of those big like camo drapes that they stick over tanks like in the desert so that you can't see the tank from the sky. One of those things. And they're just going to they're going to they're going to spring him on Notre Dame. Am I right? Maybe if I turn out to be right, will I pretend like I said all of this completely seriously and with certainty? Yes, I will. All right, Jared, uh, that, that is all the time that we have here. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to see, seeing Ohio State continue to prove here. And, yeah, I'm exci- excited to see, see this Buckeyes uh, this weekend here. I'll tolerate your gloating if you're right. You're goddamn right you will. All right, yep, uh, that's it. Um Come join the Discord server. Um, we have like a whole economy working in the Discord server now. We have a new bot that you can like earn coins. The, the coins are only good on the Discord server, just so there, there's no actual monetary value involved. But you, we we now have a we now have a virtual roulette wheel in the Discord server. We now have a virtual slot machine in the Discord server, and we have sports gambling in the Discord server. Um, again, all of this for fake, non-denominational coins. It's getting serious. It is kind of getting serious. Um, but I once again want to point out these coins have no actual value. Wait, that's all fake money. Yes, no, Matt. That's all. It's all fake money. But yeah, but we're so competitive that it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, it's getting serious in the Discord server, y'all. It's getting real serious. 
So if you want to join in on the fun, uh, come check it out. And oh, by the way, because this was something we were just reviewing with our programmer who writes all of these bots for us. Um, I'm about to retire. I need revenue streams. Well, the, the coaching isn't paying the bill, Nomad. Um, Want to point this out? You earn the coins by chatting in the Discord server. That's how you earn the coins. And you, there's a bonus structure for how you earn the coins based off of how much uh, money, what level you contribute to us on the Patreon. Now, you don't need to be a you don't need to contribute to the Patreon to enjoy any of this. The Discord server is free. You still accrue coins for free by talking in the server. But the more money you give in the Patreon, the faster you earn coins. So that's a thing that's that's worth noting. All right, Kyle, uh, that is it uh, for me. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? A quick 10 second reaction, Jared, to Coach Noel's comment about no more feast or famine mindset. No more feast or famine mindset. Mm -hmm. He said he's adjusting to the uh, adjusting what he needs to do here at at Ohio State to try to, to try to get more pressure from his defensive line. Okay, I would like I would like more details about what all of that means. <laughs> Uh, Can we just here. go feast? See, now that's that's spikes. I That's what I want to. I, I want to. OK, uh, Coach Knowles, what's what's up with the defensive line? He goes, I'm going to let them feast now. I think I would prefer that answer. And I, I get that that's equally vague, but it's also what I would like to hear. When you're at, when you're at places where you need to live in that world, feast or famine type of world, when you're trying to make a lot of chances, do a lot of different things to somehow gain the advantage I think I've adjusted my philosophy here. We have different players. And my job is to make sure we win the game, not to get tackle for losses. And a lot of times, I think the best philosophy here is to let the guys play. Not to get, I know, see, but I want tackles for losses. <laughs> <laughs> tackle for losses do help you get wins. Listen, I just want a disruptive defensive line. I but 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 hey, if if the takeaway here is I'm gonna let the defensive line play, I think I I think I'm gonna count that as a win. I'm going to ignore all the other things that I don't understand or maybe aren't what I want to hear. And I'm gonna hyper focus on the thing that makes me happy, which is that he's gonna let the defensive line just play. There you go. Yep, that's it. Makes everything better when they feast. See, that's what I'm saying. Listen, Co Coach Knowles, here, here's my all feast, no famine. Be aggressive, apply pressure, but also don't let anything behind you. Blitz all the time, but also have a protective shell. I want all of it. I want you to add five more players to the field. Fuck the rules. Whatever it takes by any means necessary. You ain't cheating, right, you ain't trying. All right, that, that's it for our Kyle's Corner. Bumping is racing. <laughs> More cliche lines. Sorry, Kyle. I was busy yelling movie quotes. No, that, that's it. I'm letting you end the show here. Okay. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by... Friday Giants, uh, Friday Giants pop punk band from the Cincinnati, I think it's Cincinnati area. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, these are the Friday Giants.